The Baltic Sea provides a home and source of food for countless species of fish, marine mammals and seabirds. For humans, however, the Baltic Sea is often nothing more than a resource that is exploited, destroyed and littered, regardless of the consequences. This unique inland sea is often carelessly or even deliberately plundered by man, with devastating impact. The Baltic Sea is a former glacial valley. There is hardly any water flowing between it and the North Sea. Therefore, the concentration of waste, pollutants and toxins cannot decrease. On the contrary, Toxins and fertilizers that enter the Baltic Sea from land and through rivers accumulate and become oxygen-depleted dead zones. These zones are increasingly spreading, driving away local marine wildlife. The majority of waste is single-use plastic, packaging material, cigarette butts and scrap metal. This is unacceptable to us. Together with our volunteers and supporters, we have cleared 90 kilometers of beaches of trash this year. We removed more than 1.5 tons of washed up fishing gear from a total of 32 beaches. But our work does not end at the beach. An even greater threat can be found underwater. Ghost nets. These are abandoned trawls and gill nets that have either been lost, left behind or even deliberately discarded by fishermen. They get stuck on shipwrecks, rocks and other structures and become a trap, like a curtain of death, for countless marine wildlife. It is estimated that every year more than 10,000 nets and pieces of nets end up in the Baltic Sea. Our goal is to remove as many of them as possible. Finding the ghost nets is a big challenge in itself. We target known wreck locations and search the surrounding area using our side scan zone. As soon as we have identified suspicious spots, we mark the exact position on our chart plotter and prepare for the search underwater. We use our underwater drone, ROV, for this purpose. The ROV allows us to check the bottom of the sea for wrecks and debris. Once we have found the location we are looking for, we come across ghost nets far too often and the animals that have fallen victim to them. Lifting the nets is hard and dangerous manual work. The Baltic Sea is also known for its cold, deep water, but above all, for its poor visibility. The search for ghost nets and their recovery is therefore rather tricky. Our divers have to be well trained and able to rely on each other. And they always have to be careful not to get entangled in the nets themselves. Keeping a level head and strong nerves are essential for this type of work. Working together as a team is the only way to free animals at depths of up to 30 meters, to detach the nets and finally bring them to the surface. It takes centuries for a fishing net to degrade, therefore killing marine wildlife for decades or longer. Fish and crabs that get entangled in the nets attract other marine wildlife, which subsequently also fall victim to the nets, including seals, seabirds and harbor purposes. Fishing nets pose the greatest threat to the latter. Nets are the biggest cause of death for our only native cetacean species. In fact, the threat is so severe that harbor purposes are now threatened with extinction in parts of the Baltic Sea. In order to bring the nets to the surface, we use so-called lift bags. These are attached to the nets and then inflated bit by bit, which gives the lift bags the necessary buoyancy.
Once the nets are freed from the rack, the bags carefully lift them to the surface. A critical moment. At this point, the divers must no longer be in direct contact with the net, as an uncontrolled lift could cause severe problems. Meanwhile, the ship's team will look out for the diving teams and inform the bridge immediately as soon as the lift bags are visible on the surface. The bags must then be secured and brought on board as quickly as possible. Gill nets like this can be several hundred meters or even up to two kilometers long. Hauling them in by hand is exhausting work. Live fish, starfish and crabs are often found in the nets as well. These have to be released carefully. The stressed animals then briefly stay in small tanks until they have recovered their strength. In the meantime, the crew stows the nets on board. Then the time has come to release the fish back into the wild. So far, we have been able to save more than 400 marine animals during the campaign. Unlike gill nets, trawls present a special challenge for us. They are considerably larger and heavier than gill nets, as they usually still have the bridles, chains, shear blades and weights attached to them. These nets can therefore quickly reach a weight of several hundred kilos. Shells, sand and mud literally make this heavy work. Gratification of a successful recovery quickly helps us forget the cold and the hard and strenuous work. Back on board, the equipment is now packed away and our vessel, the Emanuel Bronner, returns back to the harbor. The job is not done yet. The heavy nets must then be taken off the vessel, either with the help of a crane or by hand. The haul then needs to be spread out, measured and then weighted to be documented. In 250 dives, we have so far been able to free the Baltic Sea from 36 nets with a total weight of 4,500 kg. In the future, these nets will no longer kill purposes, seals and fish. Despite this incredible result, we are still at the very beginning of the enormous task of conserving and protecting our Baltic Sea. That is why we continue for the Baltic Sea and its inhabitants. Thank you.